Electrocution is one of the highest causes of crane-related death. Alive here that are all alive, low and high. To the right, we'll go to the right over there. It's vital that crane operators and those working at the hook and in the vicinity of the crane make themselves aware of power lines that could come into contact with the crane or the load and put into place procedures that ensure this doesn't happen. In this video, we're going to look at cranes working near power lines and the things we can do to protect the health and safety of persons from the risk this presents. Does the crane need to touch power lines for someone to get electrocuted? The answer to this is no. Cranes and their loads must keep well away from live power lines. Electricity can arc from the wires to the crane, even if the crane is not touching the wires. You don't have to have a direct contact with an overhead power line to receive a fatal electric shock. Simply being too close can kill. In this video, we've given the required clearances according to Australian Standards 2550.1. Some states, territories and worksite requirements differ from these clearances. You must always consult your local power distributor or state authority for the latest information when planning your work. Regulations can also change over time. Australian Standard 2550.1 gives clearances to be kept from both high and low voltage wires. The Crane Industry Council of Australia website has links to each state's authorities so you can get the most up-to-date information applicable to your situation. The standard identifies low voltage as distribution wires on poles up to and including 132 kilovolts, like what we see running down our streets, delivering power to our houses and industries. Aerial conductors for trams and trains are also classified as low voltage wires. There are two clearances that must be kept from low voltage. If no spotter is used, then no part of the crane or load must get any closer than 6.4 metres from the wires or go above the wires. This includes the winch rope. If a spotter is used, then the no-go zone is anywhere above the wires and within 3 metres from each side of the wires. And when determining the clearances, allowances must be made for load swing to ensure the clearances required are kept even if the load does swing closer to the wires. High voltage wires are classed as transmission lines on towers greater than 132 kilovolts. There are two clearances that must be observed. If no spotter is used, then no part of the crane or load must get any closer than 10 meters from the wires or go above the wires, including the winch rope. If a spotter is used, then the no-go zone is anywhere above the wires and within 8 meters from the wires. If it's required to enter the spotter required zone, then a separate pre-start job or site meeting must be convened and a risk assessment completed. And be aware that no loads are to be lifted over the top of wires. This can only be done with written approval from your local power distributor. The spotter used must be qualified and competent to do this task. Some states require licensed spotters. Others require that the spotter is properly trained and competent in this skill. Check with the Chief Electrical Inspector or equivalent authority in your state. The spotter's duty is to not undertake any other work whilst performing spotting duties. Be positioned so as to minimise the risk of exposure to hazards. Be able to clearly observe the separation distances. Be specifically instructed in the workplace hazards applicable to the site and be able to communicate with the crane operator at all times during erection, operation and dismantling of the crane. When working near power lines, a standard procedure should be followed when setting the crane up and before starting the job. A worksite inspection must be conducted to identify potential hazards, including energised overhead electric lines or associated electrical equipment. Before the commencement of the job, a documented site-specific risk assessment should be completed by a trained and competent person. A risk assessment considers what could happen if someone is exposed to a hazard and the likelihood of it happening. This step will help to determine the level of risk for each task and in selecting control measures based on that risk level. This assessment shall be verified immediately before work commences and its relevance monitored during the job. 
If the initial circumstances change, work shall cease until a revised risk assessment is undertaken. A copy of the assessment should be kept for future reference. Position the crane to maintain required clearances, considering where the load is to be lifted and then moved to. If working beneath wires, allow for wire sag and movement caused by wind. Barrier off a safe work zone to keep all unauthorized personnel, including members of the public, well away from the crane during the lift. Use signs to warn of the danger. Wear all appropriate PPE, such as hard hats, rubber soled boots and gloves. Earth the crane. If the crane does come in contact with power lines, a good earth can help trip protection devices like fuses in the power line circuit. But do not rely on this to save you. Use an approved tagline to control the load. The tagline must be made from dry, natural fibre rope and a minimum of 16 millimetres in diameter. During the lift, continue to monitor clearances. Only the crane operator should be in contact with the crane whilst in use. Use a spotter where necessary. If the spotter notices anything untoward, then he or she must immediately inform the crane operator to stop and then reassess the situation. Have tiger tails fitted to the wires. For jobs of long duration, such as a construction site, the local power authority can fit tiger tails to the wires. Tiger tails do not allow you to get any closer to the wires than the prescribed clearances. They are a visual reminder only. If a pick and carry lift is to be attempted, prior to the crane moving with the load, the path to be travelled must be walked and all overhead hazards including power lines must be identified and noted in the risk assessment. Many cranes have hit power lines whilst conducting pick and carry lifts. Too many workers have been injured or killed when electrocuted during a pick and carry lift. If you need to work within the no-go zones, this can only be done with written approval from the local power distributor. And this will only be given after a full hazard risk assessment has been conducted by them. Whatever measures are required, they must be adhered to. For non-live power lines adjacent to live power lines, Due regard shall be given to the possibility of inadvertent energization from adjacent electrical apparatus, induction, lightning, static charges or other means. Hazard identification and hazard control methods have to be specified in the pre-start risk assessment before working near non-live power lines. That's all OK. I'll sign it off. If a crane or load contacts live conductors, the relevant electricity distributor shall be immediately notified of the situation and until assistance is received, a competent person shall remain in a prominent position to warn of the danger of electrocution. The following procedure should be followed by the crane operator. Remain in the cabin or on the crane. Warn everyone in the vicinity to keep well clear and not to touch any part of the crane, rope or load. If possible, move the crane off the wires. If this is not possible, then remain inside the cabin or on the crane and take no further action until it's confirmed the conditions are safe. Never assume the power is off. You should assume that all power lines are live and are capable of delivering a fatal shock. Wait until the power authority has arrived and told you it is safe. Told us that it's safe for you to get off the crane. It's safe for you to get off the crane. Copy that? Copy. Thank you. If it is necessary to get off the crane due to fire or some other reason, then the operator must jump well clear of the crane, making sure not to touch the ground and crane at the same time. The operator should then continue to move away from the crane by shuffling or hopping for at least 10 metres. When a crane is electrified, the ground can also be electrified in decreasing circles. This is known as step voltage. By shuffling or hopping away, you will not step from one voltage to another thereby reducing the risk of electrocution. Before attempting to free any victim, always assess the danger. Do not become the next victim. Anyone touching a victim still in contact with an electrical current may also receive a severe electric shock. Remember, always assume that power lines are live. An incident like this must be reported to your local regulatory authority for investigation. When a crane has been in contact with a live aerial conductor, 
be aware of the potential for tyres to explode up to 24 hours after the incident. Set up a 300 metre exclusion zone around the crane for a minimum of 24 hours. Following this, the crane shall be checked by a competent person for any damage to the crane components. Any actions recommended by the competent person shall be completed before the crane is returned to service. Never get complacent when working near power lines. Electricity is an invisible killer. Safe procedures must be followed every time you're working near power lines for the safety of yourself and those around the crane. Remember, look up and live. <laughs>